<laughs> Hello, I'm Greg Gutfeld with Lisa Booth, Juan Williams, Eric Bowling, and a skittle is her bowling ball, Dana Brino. Le five. Chuck Schumer, a.k.a. Fawcett Face, said the Dems will block all funding for more immigration agents and for the wall, too. That's about as surprising as Dana posting a dog picture. <laughs> it's the same old stick. Take a good idea like improving the border and then recast it as widespread intolerance. Here's a game for everyone. When Schumer speaks, can you count the lies? The president's immigration policies are destroying local economies causing chaos and panic in families and communities who have done nothing, nothing, nothing wrong. By using racial profiling and fear-mongering to target law-abiding immigrants, the Trump administration is putting people with a traffic ticket or a status violation in the same category as serious violent criminals. All right, Chuckles, that was quite a life vector. Trump's policies are destroying economies. He's employing racial profiling. He's targeting legal immigrants. There were more there, but I couldn't keep up. He should change his name to Upchuck, given all the lies he throws up. The economy's fine, unemployment's down. As for profiling and harassing legal immigrants, by conflating illegal with legal immigration, it's Schrumer who is the real guilty party here. But he's not done. Immigrants are an integral part of this country. Democrats will be vigilant and strong in our commitment to upholding the promise of America and shielding immigrants from President Trump's policies. Senate Democrats are prepared to fight this all the way. My message to all of you, keep organizing, keep calling, keep marching. Oh, yeah. Once again, lumping illegal with legal, blurring the path to citizenship. Why would he confuse such things? To gin up fear and hysteria, perhaps? When do Democrats ever do that? Oh, yeah, all the time. If Democrats didn't have panic to rely on, they'd have nothing but folk songs and kale to keep them warm. But they know fear works when you're out of ideas. But guess what, Juan? You can be pro-immigration <laughs> while wanting a process that guarantees that it's safe and legal. Safe and legal. Isn't that what the Democrats always say they want? Anyway, what's great about being a conservative, you can hold two ideas in your head at once. With Chuck, in the limited overhead compartment that is his brain, there's barely room for one. Um, Eric, you think he might supply evidence to back up one, one of those claims? <laughs> Do one? Know what we were doing to that sound like? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so, yeah, this it's the fear mongering. But clearly on the left, the mayors that we talked about are going to get together and they're going to push back. Just uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions says that they're going to they're debating, talking about holding back back funding to the sanctuary states and cities that, that declare themselves that. And for what? For to use it in, in places like, I don't know, transportation. How about the wall? Maybe who knows? Again, I'm pro I'm a conservative who's pro immigration. I'm pro legal immigration. And again, float this idea. Every state has, what, 10 to 15 DMVs in their state? Create that DMV as an embassy where if you walk in there as an illegal, you're not going to get arrested or deported, but you're going to put your name down and you're going to go on the list, back of the list, but you're at least documented, not a pathway to citizenship, but pathway to legality at the end of the list. And you don't have to leave. So, again, I think we should increase immigration that way. The only problem is, boy, the DMV, that line's going to get longer. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh. You can renew your driver's license online now. Not in, not in New York City. Yes, you can. That's not, I was no, thinking. because I, was, I let it expire. Oh, no, well, uh, if you are a responsible adult <laughs> and don't let it expire, you can do it. Because I'm doing that right now. Yeah, I course. just have to go get an eye this test. perfect. Oh, everything you can do online. Obviously. Anyway, uh, Dana, since you've already started talking, <laughs> politics seems like an arena where Supplying proof is no longer a requirement for success. Like, he could just say that and no reporter it, questions. Because it, it's fake news. Yes, fake nobody news. Nobody cares. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, the one I really didn't understand was destroying local economies. And yeah. Eric's own, one more thing yesterday showed that consumer confidence is the highest it's been in 16 years. Mm -hmm. I would like, if he has evidence of that, I would... I would definitely like to see it. I, yeah. I agree that there could be economic harm if we curtail immigration too much. And I really like Eric's idea on 
uh, on bringing in more legal immigrants or providing some way for people to get right with the system. But the other way that they're going to do it, and uh, Senator Schumer did not allude to this, but we know it's happening. It could be happening as we speak because the mayor of Seattle is going to give a press conference about all of this. Mm -hmm. It's lawsuits. So they try to tie all of President Trump's um, policies up in the courts, so which means that nothing gets solved for anybody for many years. Yeah. And that, but that's how they, that's how they that's win. How they will, will. That's how they beat us, Lisa. It's not fair. Um, I think the, the, the thing that I keep thinking about is it's almost impossible to uh, enforce assimilation. So you kind of have to start with the border, right? I mean, isn't that where you begin? I don't know. Well, no, I mean, obviously that's, that's important. But if you're looking for a permanent name for him, I think I like Fawcett Face better than Upchuck, just for the record, let the record <laughs> state. But if you're Senator Chuck Schumer and you're worried about sowing chaos and you're worried about, uh, you know, people being upset and concerned, you think that you would maybe tone down the hyperbole. Uh, obviously, what you just said there, clearly he's stoking fears um, and doing exactly what he's concerned about happening. But the irony of it, too, is Senator Chuck Schumer uh, is saying that he's not going to support the, the funding for the border wall. But he actually voted for the legislation that President Trump is using to try to build the wall. That was the 2006 to, uh, Secure Fence Act. So did Senator Dianne Feinstein. So did Hillary Clinton. So did President Obama. And Senator Feinstein at the time said that the border security uh, was a very, very important, was incredibly important, and that they were Democrats were behind the border fence. Mm -hmm. Juan, what do you make of this? Why must Chuck Schumer make up lies like that? You know, He's a lying liar full of lies. You know, sometimes I miss you. But then I come <laughs> back and I realize, oh, no, this is an alternate reality. Is this going to make dinner it's, tonight it's, awkward? It is going to. You know what? Because I sent you that text. It's not, you know, don't think anything about it. Uh, it's but, just dinner. But I will say, you don't, you don't understand. But the mayor of Philadelphia just came out and said, you know what? Immigrants, legal and illegal, have revived entire sections of our city. Mm -hmm. You can see that here in New York entire sections of a city you start to spread fear it's not chuck schumer but it's i mean donald but trump you, no, but you said legal fear. and illegal why would legal be in fear why well, no no i said legal it's and illegal, illegal have revived but then you fear. Saying, saying, let me explain why okay. legal and illegal would be in fear and okay. this is not something that's being created here or or somehow fabricated by chuck schumer it's real on the streets of our nation mm -hmm. and the reality is that you have people who think my family, my grandmother, is going to be thrown out any but second. Where, where we these? have a tape. Hang on just a okay. second. There was a tape of a young woman in her car being driven to school by her dad. Mm. The dad is pulled over, and suddenly she's making a little video with her, her cell phone of her dad being taken away, and she has to go to school. Mm -hmm. That's real fear, Greg. That's not something. That's just not games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of this is tied to the idea, oh, these illegal immigrants, they're so criminal. We've had several studies come out in the last few weeks that say, no, in fact, lower levels than people who are citizens in the country. But why am I we there is, we also have the study that shows where, higher levels. Well, and where were these people we and where it. was Senator Chuck Schumer when President Obama was deported? All right, there's a whole lot of controversy surrounding the House Intel Committee's investigation of Russia's meddling in our election. It's now stalled after embattled chairman Devin Nunes canceled a hearing in which former acting attorney general Sally Yates was supposed to testify. The Senate Intel Committee is also investigating, and it's separate. We got an update on that probe just a short while ago. We would be crazy to try to draw conclusions from where we are in the investigation. I think Mark and I have uh, committed to let this process go through before we uh, form any opinions. And I would hope that that's what you would like us to do. This was one of the biggest investigations that the Hill has seen in my tenure. It's important for us at least, and I think all of us here, to remember to not lose sight about what this investigation is about. An outside foreign adversary effectively sought to hijack our most critical democratic process. When we started this, and we saw the scope and what was involved, I said it was the most important thing I'd ever taken on in my public life. I believe that more firmly now than even when we started. The two senators also took questions from reporters. Is there anything that you've seen, either of you or your staff, that would raise any direct links to the president himself with what happened last year? Again, we won't take a snapshot in time and uh, make any observations on it. 
but we know that our challenge is to answer that question for the American people in our conclusions to this investigation. All right, so Juan, that was a little different than you'd seen from the House Intel Committee the last couple of weeks, where the two chairmen are battling each other on the cable stations and leaking against each other and all that. Now you had these two senators, um, Warner from Virginia and Burr from North Carolina, who at least in public look like they're able to communicate and work together and sort of calmed everything down. It sure has. And I remember that when this committee, the Senate committee, as you point out, Dana, is separate from the House, this is a separate investigation, when they started out, Mark Warner, who was standing there next to Senator Burr, uh, threatened to leave because he was upset. But that has all gone away. And if there's anything standing in the way of a special prosecutor now, it's this Senate committee. Because people can have some level of trust. I don't think there's any trust left in what's going on in the House. I mean, that's a, that's a circus at this point. It's unbelievable. It is amazing, Eric, is. how many people are actually working on this, because we know that the FBI is investigating. Then you have the Senate, which, which said they had 20 staffers, or no, seven full-time staffers working on it. And then you know there's stuff going on in the House. You have people at the White House who are working on it. I mean, it's taking up a lot of time and energy in Washington. Three separate investigations. The House we talked about with uh, Devin Nunes, uh, this, this Senate uh, investigation, the ongoing federal investigation. I thought it very comforting that uh, at one point, a, a, a reporter asked a question to Burr, Senator, can you be uh, impartial? Can, you, can we trust you to be impartial to, to running this Senate investigation, knowing that you were a Trump um, surrogate or supporter at one point? And he said he could, but more comforting was Senator Warner stepping in saying, I have full confidence in Senator Burr being able to handle this investigation. So I think they are absolutely going to get to the, to the bottom of it. The reason why Yates didn't that, that the House committee uh, hearing was canceled before Yates, Clapper, and Brennan is because Devin Nunes wanted to hear from James Comey and Mike Rogers prior to that, and, they, and that, that was offered, but Comey and Rogers said they weren't going to show up, and that was supposed to happen on Monday, so that all got pushed back. Now, there's some news that Adam Housley broke last night, and I think it's very, very important that Chuck Grassley is looking into what, to what degree the FBI was involved in paying for that dossier that we know about uh, on Trump and, and, and whether they have not, not only just received the information, but were they actually paid for it, paid for it in, in Grassley's allegedly looking into whether or not there was a payment going that way. And again, the dossier was put together by Trump opposition research team. So it gets really, really but there's sticky. Nothing, there's nothing Let me get Greg in here. Um, you said yeah, that yeah. you had watched today. Yeah. Did you feel reassured? Uh, it's called a joint presser because you need one to be high to follow that thing. I was just like, there's not, no, the more people talk, <laughs> the more people talk about this, the less we know. So I, you definitely need like an independent uh, investigation. I nominate Jack Reacher. I think he could get to the bottom of this. But I go back, here's my we'll prediction. Call Mr. Child. It, it, yes. Right Very good. Uh, my prediction is that, like, you have the hypothesis, Russians meddled with the election. The opposite hypothesis is, no, this is baloney generated by sore loser Democrats. The, synth synth the synthesis of the two is going to be correct, which is that there was some meddling. There's not this, I mean, and I'm predicting this. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just predicting it, is that they're going to find some meddling, but that's all they're going to find, I think. But you're going to hear about it for four Ever. years because whenever somebody's in power, the other side latches on to an issue and will run that issue for full. Because remember, we did this. The Republicans, we did it with, with Benghazi, even though, and, but Benghazi was real. Oh, you yeah. Know, it, was, it was. I mean, you should be embarrassed. No, you <laughs> Benghazi be embarrassed. was real. Let me ask. One thing I thought was surprising how dare you? Uh, to, to Greg's point about how long this could go on is Senator Warner was asked one, a question, and he said, Yes, I do think that we'll be able to get this done before the 2018 midterm elections. So that's another year and a half from now. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I think, too, the difference between what we've seen from the Senate and the House is, is sort of reflective of the various bodies of Congress, right? I mean, the Senate is a more deliberative body, which is why I think it's important, just real quick regarding the Gorsuch stuff, uh, to keep the Senate rules in place, because I think it's important that the Senate is much different uh, than the House in keeping, you know, sort of that deliberation and just being a more thoughtful 
body of Congress. Uh, but look, I, I mean, there's just so many questions. So I, I think this thing is going to go on for a long time because there's not been any hard evidence of collusion. But the fact that you have an FBI investigation, you can't outrun that. You can't ignore that. That is very, very important. So the problem is uh, when there continues to be information that surfaced, it's very difficult to turn a blind eye to, uh, to it based on the fact that we know that there's this ongoing uh, FBI investigation. So I, I think this thing's just going to be very prolonged uh, but it is important to see, you know, two exactly. different. Well, you know, because it's going to take so long from a White House together. communication standpoint. I think that they should appoint one communicator that is the point person on this who knows everything about it, and so that Sean Spicer at the White House podium can say, "Thank you for the question. You're going to have to call John Doe, who's working on Jack that. Reacher. You know that you know that Jack <laughs> Reacher is going to return your call." And that way they can actually focus on the issues at hand that the president wants to focus on. That way the press gets answers and they can actually find some space in the briefing room. This is my two cents for what that's worth. All right, ahead, Al Gore isn't giving up his fight to convince us all that the world is warming. He's back with a really inconvenient truth. We have the first trailer for his new sequel starring President Trump. That's next. A decade ago, Al Gore warned the world that global warming would destroy us all in his dramatic documentary, An Inconvenient Truth. Well, we're still here, 10 freezing cold winters later, but the man who claims he invented the internet still insists the planet is in grave peril in an inconvenient sequel called Truth to Power. Here's the first trailer. <laughs> it's time to put America first. That includes a promise to cancel billions in climate change spending. Our plan will end the EPA. The next generation would be justified in looking back at us and asking, what were you thinking? Couldn't you hear what the scientists were saying? Couldn't you hear what Mother Nature was screaming at you? It is right to save humanity. It is wrong to pollute this earth. It is right to give hope to the future generation. Don't let anybody tell you that we're going to get on rocket ships and live on Mars. This is our home. <laughs> wow, dramatic. The trailer came out yesterday, the same day President Trump signed an executive order to roll back President Obama's initiatives <laughs> to address climate change. Imagine hey, that. <laughs> me, Dana, um, the messaging on the timing. Well, that was, what's interesting is that I was remember, rem remembering back, I think it was 2004, I was working um, at the White House Council on Environmental Quality, and it was the coldest day in a decade right. in January of 2004. And the same thing happened. The, the, the sequel to The First Inconvenient Truth actually ran on that very day. So um, I don't know about the timing of this. I would imagine they had the trailer ready to go and probably were able to make it into the news cycle. Right. Greg, does this mean uh, all conservatives, we're, we're all you know, against clean air and no. clean water, and you, we don't believe in any sort of global issues with, with temperature? We, are, we hate the earth. You can quote me on that. You know what is amazing about this story? Do you know who proved Al Gore wrong? Al. Al Gore. Because he said 11 years ago that in 10 years, the planet, when we were in this, inter, this planetary emergency, and if you didn't listen to him, the world was going to implode. And now 11 years later, he has a sequel. He proved himself wrong. Do you know, you know what else he was wrong about? The polar bears. Said the polar bears were drowning because of missing ice. We have now more polar bears than ever. And get this, they're Overweight. I almost swore there for a moment there. <laughs> I had to catch myself. He said we'd have. He lied about catastrophic weather damage from climate change, um, it, but the losses from national disasters are now worse, or actually, I mean, less. Actually, declining. And most scientists agree that there's no link between extreme weather and climate change. He was wrong on that. There was another really hilarious thing that he was wrong on. He said hurricanes were getting stronger during the uh, global warming. Not true. No category four or five since t 2005. He lied about everything. He's a big, fat liar. And he took credit <laughs> for the Internet. Now, why? Yes. He, one thing he did do, though, is he somehow went from a lawmaker to a very wealthy man on the heels of some of these things, the inconvenient By truth, the jets and climate everything. change. Yeah, yeah exactly. And also sold, sold his TV network for $500 million. This is good business for him, climate change. Wait, what did that have to do with climate change that he well, sold? Well, it was all on the back of his, his, his climate. That's the green he cares about. Right. Oh, so every rich dollar, man dollar is a bill. bad guy. I can't believe I'm sitting here with Republicans. I thought you guys liked <laughs> the rich. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, I'm, I, 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 listen, I'm not complaining that he made money. I'm saying oh. that it's on the basis of what is very, very disputable 
I mean, it is not. He didn't sell it on the basis of, of uh, climate change. You don't think the whole no. hysteria that he no, created no, no. Look, helped he, him get he, some grants and loans and oh, no, book no. deals and movie deals? No, he made movie deals. If that, But that's not the money. The money we're talking about was, I think, he sold to... Yeah, Al Jazeera. Yeah, but he right, had so to make the that's, money to buy it. Oh, this is, this is so far. This is which, so far a field. Which let Al me, is worse? Let me just say, here's <laughs> you know what you guys have such trouble because you want you want to beat up on Al Gore, but the reality is, I was just you know I I feel I, sorry I, for him. A World Meteorological Organization record warm temperatures. Lie. A drop in Arctic sea levels. Lie. Severe. <laughs> Severe he drought in ice free Arctic Ocean by 2014. No, no. So all of a sudden, oh no, it's let's ignore thicker. that. Al, it's easier to no. Al, Gore, Al Gore. Al Gore is clearly trying to take advantage of this hype up rhetoric about Donald Trump to try, President Trump to try to make money. Look, it's a smart marketing ploy. He even had Nelly's a song hot in here when he came out on stage. He's clearly making, you know, a grand spectacle of this. But look, I think it's a positive thing that President Trump is rolling back some of these egregious overreach that we saw under President Obama's EP. For instance, the Clean Power Plan, which the Supreme Court blocked, President Obama did not get his cap and trade bill passed through Congress. So the EPA essentially moved forward unilaterally trying to write the Clean Air Act, which is the reason why it was rejected uh, by the Supreme Court, because it was an egregious overreach. These sort of overreaches and these rules and regulations cost Americans jobs. So you can certainly have a balance, but when you're pushing uh, things and essentially trying to write legislation, uh, as the EPA tried to do, that are going to cost Americans jobs, that is wrong. So good for President you know Trump what? for yeah. trying to roll that back and be responsible, Lisa, because that's a responsible Lisa, thing Lisa, this do. is so unpopular with the American people. The American people want to be able to go to the beach this summer. They want oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want to tomorrow. It's the beach. It's the beaches, beaches are going to be gone tomorrow. The beaches are going to be gone. Does Juan making an appearance in the Al... I think Juan's making an appearance in the Al Gore movie. He's going to get a cut in this by pushing the propaganda. If you want to talk about somebody who's playing the suckers, how about Donald Trump how about Al Gore, who we're talking about I, right that's now? That's what you said. That's yeah, what, so I want to tell you who's really putting on a show he's that that's green. hurting people. Right. Is, he, uh, is, is President Trump having coal miners behind him? No, because guess what? He's not going to get any jobs under back. President Obama. There, you, no, you, guys, you know what? You guys it's thing, automation. They're rapping. No, no, but I'm just telling you, it's automation. I got you. And it's the fact that now it's also a regulation. No to everyone out there Juan says you're not going to be able to go to the beach this summer unless you believe in Oh my right, god. Next, Al's pal Hillary Clinton has reemerged from the woods to get to try to get women to rise up against President Trump. Her sharpest political remarks since her devastating defeat coming up. Welcome back. We don't see very much of Hillary Clinton anymore. Do we? But she reemerged. Yes, Gregory. Yes. <laughs> Last <laughs> night in San Francisco at a conference for businesswomen. She poked some fun at herself, but she also took jabs at her former opponent, now President Trump. I am thrilled to be out of the woods. <laughs> there is no place I'd rather be than here with you other than the White House. <laughs> let me let you in on a little secret. The other side never quits. Sooner or later, they'll try again. We will need to fight back twice as hard. Resist, insist, persist, enlist. Sure, the last few months haven't been exactly what I envisioned, although I do know what I'm still fighting for. I'm fighting for a fairer, big-hearted, inclusive America. Wow. Resist, insist, persist, a bill, enlist. And Bill was in the back going, where's your sis? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. So what do you Barely think? Rhymed. What do you think, Gregory? Do you think she's making a statement here? I think the out of the woods joke is getting a little old, but I dig the look. It's like an HBO or Netflix comedy special. You know, you got the leather going. But the best idea for her is a reality show, Hill Billy, you know, Hill and Bill in a cabin in the woods. Next door, you got Huma and Anthony Weiner, and they got a like live there for six months would anyone with no watch running that, water. Though? What? Would anyone watch that? Cuck, are you kidding Greg me? I would watch that in half a second. Yes. It, it would just be Bill keeps bringing home hitchhikers. <laughs> it would be hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can yeah. see that. I can see that I'm now. really enthused. So what do you think? Do you like Hillary Clinton making an appeal to American women? But I was out and saw a lot of t-shirts recently that said, 
and still she persists, which I guess is picking up on McConnell and... Uh, oh, yeah. Elizabeth Warren knew exactly what she was doing. Uh, and there was also an announcement that she had a forthcoming book, I think, on the same day that she did that. But look, who cares what Hillary Clinton thinks? I'm so over her, and I'm so over the fact of her using her sex as she did during the election to try to get votes or try to get women to think that they uh, have to vote for her. But look, I, the reality is she wants to be critical of uh, President Trump and some of the rhetoric that he used. But the problem for Hillary Clinton is she was a candidate devoid of a message. She never had a message that resonated with Americans. And she was also a horrible candidate, which is something people don't talk about enough. Uh, she ran a horrible campaign, not stepping foot in a state like Wisconsin. She spent more or had more uh, or television ads advertising pursuing one electoral college vote in Omaha, Nebraska during the closing weeks than she did in Wisconsin and Michigan combined, which would have brought her 26 electoral college well, votes. I, well, okay, so okay, okay, the election's over, Clinton but thinks. the election's over. No, but I think now she stands as one of the leaders of the Democratic Party. Oh, That's sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Good luck with uh, that. Look, not a fan of Hillary Clinton, but that Hillary Clinton right there is much better than the candidate Hillary Clinton w that we saw last and why year. Is that? She's more relaxed. She's more herself. Look at her. It's, it, it's not the you know that that the whatever the thing she was doing on on stage. She was being so stern and, and like th this was a relaxed Hillary Clinton. And her message, frankly, was good to people who buy into that message. I, that that would be a far more desirable candidate to me than the one that we had. Can I just say one quick thing before we go? Um, Clinton Foundation donations are down 37 percent, 37 yeah. percent since she lost the election, which begs the question: So were these people philanthropic? They were donating to the oh, Clinton on. Foundation. You the know what? Come or were on. they doing it for access? Yeah. And All right. So was, Dana, one the of the things that uh, Hillary Clinton did was to defend uh, April Ryan, a reporter in the White House briefing who got into it with Sean Spicer, and Spicer was telling April Ryan, stop shaking your head and all the rest. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has some power for American women? Well, I think it did because it became a really big issue immediately. I, as soon as it happened in the briefing room, it was like, oh my gosh, did he really do that? And I think Sean even recognized it because today he gave her the first question in the briefing. So I, as I try to smooth things over in the briefing room, but yes, I mean, people are paying attention. And I don't think it's right to say that it wasn't persuasive to the American people. She did win the popular vote by over three million. She was not a good campaigner and she had a terrible tactic of never going to Wisconsin. But there's even worse news for the Democrats. And Nate Cohn of the uh, New York Times Upshot has a great piece that I recommend to everybody. It's called, uh, Turnout Wasn't the Driver of Clinton's Defeat. The turnout wasn't the problem. It it actually, what they found in looking at all the voter rolls is that it was persuasion. So Donald Trump was more persuasive to white voters who had voted for Obama. And so the answer wasn't necessarily Hillary Clinton. It probably was Joe Biden. <laughs> And do they learn that lesson or not? With her at the, at the helm, if she's going to be the leader, which I don't think she is because President Obama will come back from mm -hmm. French Polynesia at some point. But if she's going to be the leader, they're not going to ever learn that lesson. Do you know who, pre you know who predicted that? Scott Adams, the guy from Dilbert, the yeah. guy who made Dilbert, said the number one factor in all of this is persuasion. And he predicted Trump's win from, like, the beginning. All right, but part of persuasion is having a good message. Well, that's right. But I do think the election's over, and I think you guys are going to see more and more of Hillary Clinton. Coming really? up, yep, First Lady Melania Trump. She's giving a, she gave a rare speech today in Washington to honor women around the world. We'll show you the highlights. Plus, her husband's new optimistic prediction for health care reform just days after his party's fail bid in the House. It's not good. President Trump took office in January with no political experience under his belt. He's learned a lot about politics since, especially after Friday's health care bill fiasco. He sounded very optimistic on the subject last night while delivering remarks to a bipartisan group of senators. Nobody ever told me that politics was going to be so much fun. <laughs> I know that we're all going to make a deal on health care. That's such an easy one. And hopefully it'll start being bipartisan because everybody really wants the same thing. We want greatness for this country that we love. So I think we're going to have some very good relationships. Right, Chuck? I see Chuck. Hello, Chuck. <laughs> uh, and I really think that will happen. Well, at least, he, at least he has a good sense of humor about it. Uh, but last night was a bipartisan event. Uh, as he mentioned, his friend Chuck was in attendance. Uh, he's hoping for some bipartisanship. Do you think it happens, Juan? 
Uh, I don't think he's been playing a bipartisan game so far, but I mean, if he could change his tune, and I think people, especially on things like infrastructure spending, the Democrats are supporting, but I think if the breakdown is anywhere, at least it would come from Republicans concerned about deficit spending. And when it comes to health care, he says, oh, that's easy? Uh, that reminds me of the same guy who said, huh, health care is a little more complicated than anybody knew. Who knew? I mean, so I, a lot of this is he's just a wonderful salesman. Dana, uh, so President Trump talked about health care. Clearly, they had some problems in the House trying to get it done. The Senate is even tougher, which senators were in attendance last night. Uh, do you think this gets done? Does health care get done? I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it. Uh, Speaker Ryan said they're going to do it. And I think that President Trump actually does look like he's having fun. Uh, he's joking around with them. He's in his element there. He's hosting a wonderful dinner at the White House. Um, but, but I do think it's hard to reach out to Democrats. You know, in many of their districts, um, he'll probably be at a 20% approval rating, maybe lower. And then you look at what Hillary Clinton just said, resist persist, like do not, whatever, enlist, whatever, yeah, whatever it all of it was. And so do you want to be labeled the Trump turncoat? Eric, what do you think? I think health care can happen, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. I think Paul Ryan said that it's, gonna, it's, it's on the docket and it's going to happen. I don't think so. I think Donald Trump... I've read somewhere they're going to take a vote next week. On what? Here's the thing, and, and I don't think we really talked about this. There were, there were probably 25 Freedom Caucus members who were against it, but the total number against... We report, or people are reporting around 30. Mm -hmm. I heard the number is closer to 60, which means a lot of moderates were against it, too. They have a, they have a tall uh, hill to climb with health care. But I do think infrastructure and taxes can go simultaneous and should go next. Yeah, there, there are moderates as well. Um, Greg, what do you think? Does health care get done? Uh, I don't know. I think, you know, the, 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 uh, Trump has the advantage. He has a diversified portfolio. Oh, very smart. Financial yeah, he does. It's, yeah, it's that, you know, the, the, my health care stock isn't doing that well. But I got, you know, I got EPA over here. It looks pretty good. And I got the jobs thing is happening over here. And I check out the taxes Little in the sanctuary wall. Sanctuary City. Sanctuary City. So he's kind of like, that's why it would, the key to having fun is to have five or six things, five or six pots going at the same time. So if something doesn't work out, you always got the other stuff to work with. That's how I run my life and why I'm so happy. Yeah. And wealthy. It sounds, no. uh, it sounds diverse. But all right. Well, one more thing coming up next, which I'm sure will be diverse as well. It's time for one more thing. I'm going to begin it by telling you my podcast is out today. It's called The One. It's awesome. We talk about artificial intelligence. We talk about leggings. And, of course, we talk about robots. It's awesome. You go to uh, Fox News, radio.foxnews.com slash podcast slash the one. If you can make it any harder to find a podcast, I don't know if you could. Let's go to this. Correct <laughs> robot news. All right, here's an adorable little moment when a young girl thinks she fell in love with a robot, but it turns out it was just a water heater. Yes, if only the robots would love us back. But unfortunately, I hate to tell that young girl, it's coming and it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. You think they're adorable now, but they're not happening. And if you keep yelling at me to keep going, I'm going to keep talking. All right? Juan? <laughs> Well, gee, I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, everybody was worried about the cherry blossoms after that recent cold snap in the snow. So, on Monday, my wife, Delise, and I went down to the Tidal Basin to take a look. And there she is. I took some pictures on the iPhone. Cherry blossoms were out. And believe me, still heavenly and beautiful. National Park wow, Service gorgeous. says they're, they've reached their peak bloom last weekend. My advice, hurry up and go. It is still unbelievably thrilling to see such beauty. Eric. Okay, very quickly, last night, Greg and I, all of us, we had an uh, interesting debate about privacy versus security. So I went on Facebook and Twitter. On Twitter, I put up a poll. We got 7,700 responses so far. Take a look, and I'm going to go walk over to the window over here because everyone's hanging out watching the show. But was the it result? was about 60-40. 7,700 voted 60-40 in favor of privacy versus security if you had to choose one as the most You're important. You're not supposed and, to choose and one. And all with, both. Well, that's true, Greg. And it, a lot of 
people were conflicted. Patty said, voted, but you have to mention that many of us are extremely conflicted. So they all, a lot of people agreed with you. Meanwhile, say hi to everyone. The Hello. Party. Okay. All right, I will give up my one more thing so that Lisa can go. I was going to give a shout-out to the U.S. women's hockey team who fought back, got paid. They deserve a lot of credit. Yeah. Over to Lisa. God yeah. bless them. Uh, well, as you might have heard, First Lady Melania Trump gave a speech this morning regarding women's empowerment. Uh, she honored 12 women at the 2017 Secretary of State's International Woman of Courage Awards. Here she is. We must continue once again to shine the light on the horrendous atrocities taking place in neighborhoods around the corner and around the globe. Together, we must declare that the era of allowing their brutality against women and children is over, while affirming that the time for empowering women around the world is now. Yeah, agenda uncovered. That's all I got for you. <laughs> There you go. Oh, I, got that. I, I noticed when Hillary Clinton does something like that, you flip out. So. Set your DVR so you never miss an episode of The Five. That's it for us. Special Report is up next.